All right, guys, we're just gonna talk about some things in, when it comes down to FDM 3D printers. Accuracy, movement speed, resolution, uh, uh, motion systems, et cetera. There's a lot of marketing out there. There's a lot of reality out there. And the reality is a lot of the time that a $200 printer versus a $250,000 printer, you can actually do the same or better on the $200 printer. But there's a lot of caveats to that. So let's just start it off with movement speed. Let's knock this one right out of the park. There's some printers out there that say we print at 200 millimeters per second. Ours, the 22 IDEX will print at 500 millimeters per second. Yes, it can go that fast. But in reality, for most applications and most prints and most materials you're not going to. Cole, talk about speed. What do we got? I see lots of, I don't want to name names, but like you, Creality says the Ender 5 can print what is 150 millimeters a second. They don't even designate whether that's print speed. It can move that quickly, reliably, and not lose steps, but can it print that quickly? No. Uh, maybe PLA, but then you have to start getting into the, uh, you, you need a high flow hot end to move that much material that quickly, volumetric flow calculations. What is important to know is, great, I'm, calm, I'm glad to hear it can do 150 millimeters a second in between printing. Like, is that travel speed? You know, 150 millimeters a second, is that travel speed or is that accurate movement speed? And then, and then are you looking at belts that are, are gonna slip if you go too fast? Or is the machine gonna shake itself apart at those speeds? Is it built on a metal frame or is it aluminum extrusions that are bolted together? There's a lot of different factors here. It's so complicated. It's, it's really, really complicated. Okay, you are you slinging around uh, filament because you're traveling at such high velocities that it's literally flying off of the nozzle. So your print's uh, gonna be there, but it's not gonna be clean. Who knows? Filament's being extruded out of the nozzle a lot of times, with the, especially with the super high temp stuff. You'll be like, well, I was printing it it's too fast, but at the right temperatures. Well, that's because everything on the walls of that filament is melted, but the core of it isn't fully melted because that's where it's actually making contact with the heat zone. So the limitation is, yeah, you can, you know what? You can print peak at 500 millimeters a second if your nozzle is 700 degrees. You know, so speed is one thing. It, look, in PLA, we've got the machine tuned in to print at 300 millimeters a second, and it works. Now, you're not always going 300 millimeters per second. You're actually going anywhere from 80 to 120 most of the time, but it's accelerating around, you know, from travel points, from point to point at up to 500. You know, up to 300 is, is the stable, uh, stable rate that we've got. Now, if you're doing a high temp filament like Ultim, then you're probably gonna go a lot slower if your chamber temperature isn't up in the 200 Celsius range because you have to make sure that that heat goes down through the part, down through the layers, so that you're getting adequate layer adhesion from layer to layer, uh, depending on each part. Now, if your part is small and it's going around in like tiny little circles like this, then it's actually building up a lot of heat throughout the part and you've got about a centimeter to an inch of the part that's super heated and actually kind of melting. Um, now if it's a larger part like this big, it's going to be moving from here to here and it's still going the same speed, but there's not as much heat. The heat's dissipating over here while the nozzle's over here and then it's getting back to it and it's actually cooler over here. By now, the this no is time the nozzle gets back to where it started on a large part, the layer below it is much, much cooler, it's had more time to cool. So think about layer adhesion as you already have one layer down. The next time the nozzle goes around to deposit the second layer, you want there to be enough heat stored, potential heat energy stored to partially melt the layer below it so they fuse together. If they don't get to fuse together, meaning your nozzle is traveling so quickly that not a lot of heat is stored in that uh, uh, filament, um, you won't get proper bonding between the two layers. It's about controlled melting and fusing of the plastic. Now, if your chamber temperature is hot, then your part is already, it's always gonna stay the same temperature and you're extruding at 400 something, but the chamber's 200 something. And so it's still super close. And the, the differential of temperature isn't nearly as great. So you just have a lot better time with it. Now, those machines currently aren't even that available right now. So getting one is kind of difficult, but as time moves on, the patents have been expired for what, over a year now. So they're coming out and becoming more and more common. Now, as far as accuracy goes, accuracy, oh my gosh. All right, so let's talk about this real quick. You're extruding with a 
let's just go with this industry standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It's a round orifice and you're on motors that go down to 12 microns in accuracy. Great. You're squeezing hot plastic through it. It's oozing out in pretty much a circle. Now, as you move around, you get up to that corner and then you come back this way, you're not gonna get a 12 micron sharp edge. You're gonna get a 0.4 millimeter, give or take edge. Uh, but the accuracy is theoretically tunable down to whatever you want. If you adjust the flow rate and the speed and the jerk and the acceleration and everything so that it stays super accurate, you can essentially get as accurate as you want if you just keep tuning in the material. Now, there's also other factors that come into this, like how dry is your material? How consistently is your material extruded? So is the entire filament diameter the exact same diameter so that what you're extruding isn't variable? Like if it's off by 0 0.01 millimeters, you're gonna have dimensional accuracy that's off by 0 0.1 millimeters or more, probably more. Um, it, it's a whole different thing, but the fact is you can almost always get down to five thousandths. Everybody asks, all the machine shops that we're working with, everybody in the, the, you know, making tooling and jigs and fixtures and aerospace parts are like, can it get five thou or better, you know, point two, you know, two thou? Yes, almost always you can tune in to whatever accuracy you actually need. Um, and that's the real question to ask is what tolerances can it hit? But even that, that's the wrong question because yeah, you can tune it for that. Um, now, with a lot of the high-tech materials, you can actually print it in net shape or within a super fine spec, and then you could machine finish it if you wanted to, because a lot of these materials are machinable. Uh, but as far as accuracy goes, if you want to print a Benchy on a $200 Ender 3 versus a $200,000 Stratasys, there's a good chance you could, because it's an open system, you could tune the Ender 3 to make a better Benchy. Almost definitely. Um, you know, or, or Markforge, for example, you know, it's a proprietary system where you don't have control over the settings. It'll print a beautiful part 98% of the time, uh, but is it gonna be exactly the way you want it? Do you have control over modifying that? Can you over extrude it so that it's even more, uh, more solid and strong? Well, no, most of the time not. Um, that is one of the huge benefits of these open material systems. You're saving 10X, 10 times the money on the cost of the filament itself. You know, you're looking at ABS from Stratasys is $300 a kilo. ABS at Micro Center down the street is $30 a kilo, even $20 a kilo. I've seen it for 14 bucks online. 14 bucks online. You tell me what's different between theirs and that. I'll tell you what, nothing. Just about nothing. Now, you do have lot traceability, so if you're buying it from you know, some off-brand, you're not gonna be able to find out where that resin actually came from and was made and the certified you know, materials. So if you get some, you know, the materials that we sell on visionminer.com all have lot traceability. That's a huge thing. If you print something and you wanna find out where that resin was made, when it was made, and you wanna get the certificate of analysis or certificate of compliance for that resin, then we can get that for you. Uh, that's definitely one of the things we do. We're kind of just ranting here at this point and uh, talking about a lot of the questions that we get when you guys call in and email in and sort of try, trying to cover a lot of ground. So leave a comment down below if you've got something that you want to know. And we do read the comments. We get a lot of comments now, so we don't respond to every single one, but we try and we really, really love you for it. And if you really like this content, hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. We got videos coming out all the time. Um, and Cole, you were about to say something? All of that stuff is tunable, but there's no way for a machine to be able to monitor it. Linear advance for being able to change the amount of extrusion during a turn, so on and so forth. Um, if you want in a super advanced slicing guide or tutorial, especially for high temp materials, let, let me know. I can I can do one tips and, and tricks then you know if you buy your machine from us or you get your material here uh, we can sometimes help you or we'll pass you off to the uh, if we can't answer the question we'll pass you off to the people that can but in general we're here to help we're help here to help you determine what you should get what you should buy for your application if 3d printing is even viable for your application which a lot of the time for a lot of people it's not um, one of the things we'll always do is be completely transparent and honest with you I tell customers potential customers all the time I'll say I don't think you need a high temp machine. I don't think you need to go down this road. And that might sound crazy, but they will come back to us when they're ready to move into that field. And I don't want to create a customer on false claims or the idea that it's easy. I want to create a loyal customer who trusts us. 
no BS here, just uh, like, <laughs> we learned early on that if we just try to sell people on something, uh, then we'll have an angry customer who expected something totally different. So we're straight up, we're straightforward. This stuff is not easy, but it is worth it. And it is a great time. We get to see amazing things happening all over the world from nuclear laboratories to aerospace parts to cryo chambers with in vitro fertilization tubes. It's incredible what this technology is really being used for and i love it it's awesome by the way if you want to see us scan this shoe right here because uh, that is a crazy texture definitely check out hit that subscribe button we're going to scan this on the pro hd cole did it the other day how'd that go cole it went really well i love that machine Scan that 3D printed shoe. 3D scanning a 3D printed shoe. Anyway, anyway, we do a lot of stuff here. If you need 3D scanners, 3D printers, we got really cool new stuff coming right around the corner. Yeah, I want you guys in the comments to write what you want to know the truth about in 3D printing. What you think might be BS, what isn't, like what clay, like, you know, you just want a straight answer. Ask the question, we'll give you the straight answer. I love it. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.